In this video and some of the following videos, we are going to look at some of the tricks that can be used to help you solve problems using Newton's Second Law. It is usually rather easy in many cases to write Newton's Second Law, but it may be mathematically difficult to solve the equation unless you have certain tricks. We'll find out in later chapters that when Newton's Law is very difficult to solve, new concepts like energy, linear momentum, angular momentum can be developed which will help us solve problems. This doesn't mean that Newton's Law is invalid in situations where we apply those concepts. It simply means that the equation may be difficult to solve, and by using these other concepts we can get to simpler equations. In general, for all the problems we'll be looking at in this course, Newton's Second Law is true. It's just that it may be difficult to solve. The first such type of problem where you can get a trick that I can help you solve Newton's Law are inclined plane problems. So let's look at some inclined plane problems. The inclined plane problem could be solved in many ways, but the trick to make the math easier is that when you work an inclined plane problem, you should place the coordinate axis so that one of the two coordinate axes lies along the incline. In other words, you should rotate your coordinate axis. Now this may seem like an unnecessary thing to do, and I didn't say that you can't solve inclined plane problems without doing this, but it will make the math a whole lot easier to work if you do this trick. So let me show you. All you have to do is that when you run into an inclined plane problem, lie your axis with the x line along the plane and the y axis perpendicular to this. That's it. And the math will be much simpler in solving the equations. Why is this? Well, it turns out it's a relatively simple thing to understand why it is. When you do this, you take a two-dimensional problem where the object could be moving in two dimensions had you put your axis as in the blue case, say like this. So as this block moves this way, he moves both along x and y if you use the blue axis. But if you use the red tilted axis, as he moves along this direction, he's moving along x. He has no motion in y, so he has no velocity in y. Furthermore, the velocity in that direction isn't changing, so he has no acceleration in that direction either. This makes those set of equations for the y direction very simple. So the whole reason is, is that it reduces a two-dimensional problem to a simpler one-dimensional problem since the velocity and angular acceleration components perpendicular to the incline are, lost a word here, are zero. So that's the whole reason why the trick works. You just need to do the trick whenever you have it occur. Now, let's show you this trick being applied. Here's an example problem. You have a block of mass m sliding down a frictionless inclined plane whose angle of inclination is 30 degrees. Important things to note is it's a frictionless inclined plane. There'll be no friction in this problem. It has an angle of inclination. It's 30 degrees. We're going to assume the block starts initially at rest. It's at a height of 5 meters we're going to want to know how fast it's going when it gets right down to here. So for this problem I'm going to lie my x-axis along the plane and I'm going to know that up here vx naught is 0 meters per second and sometime later down here it's going at some speed. This distance, which I'll call x, is the length of this incline. So this guy right here is x equals 0. This distance all the way down, which is the hypotenuse of this triangle, is L. So that's L. And I'll give this symbol the symbol H. Now, there are no plug and chug formulas. You're not going to look in the book somewhere and find a formula that says for incline plane, this is how the formula that you get for the speed of the block. The whole reason for doing these problems isn't just to learn physics. It's to learn how to solve problems. And solving problems are useful for your career. They're useful for your future academic. 
What you have to do is take ideas that we've already covered and put them together like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle or like moves in a chess game in order to build something pretty brilliant out of this to solve this problem. These require higher reasoning skills and this is one of the reasons that you're in a physics class is to build these reasoning skills. So I've aligned my axis like this. I look at the problem and say, hey, I don't have any basic formulas for solving the speed when it reaches the bottom of an incline. What physics do I know? Well, I wasn't given an acceleration time graph, so I can't just find the area into the curve to find the change of velocity. The kinematic equations might be valid, but I'd have to know the acceleration, and I'd have to know that the acceleration was constant, and I'm not given acceleration in this problem. So what I do know that's always true is Newton's Law. So let's apply Newton's Laws to try to solve this problem. So if I'm going to use Newton's Laws, I'm going to draw a free body diagram. So first thing up here, I'm going to draw my free body diagram. There's my isolate the body. Second, I apply want f find the weight. Weight points straight down. Not a very good drawing. Hopefully you can do better than I can my pen here. Uh, applied. There are no applied. Is there a normal? Yeah, a normal applies the force from the incline upon the block. Are there any tensions? No, there's no tension. Friction? No, there's no friction. So that's all the forces. This angle here is theta. And we said that we're going to make our axis x and y. So that's my incline free body diagram for the mass of the inclined plane. Now I'm going to use this free body diagram and read it in order to write Newton's laws. So in writing Newton's laws off my free body diagram, some of the forces in x is mass times acceleration in x. Some of the forces in y is mass times acceleration in y, but we know there is no acceleration in y because of the way we put our axis. In the x direction, the only vector pointing in the x direction is the weight. So I go back up here and I look and I say, hey, the only thing I have is this side of this vector. So that's the opposite side. So that means I need the sine function, and it's in the positive x direction. Oops, sorry, made a mistake here. This should be y, and that was supposed to be x. That changes everything if I don't make it that way. So down here I have w sine theta is m a x, and over here for the y, going back up, all of this force is in the y direction and this side of the weight, which is the adjacent side, the cosine is in the negative y direction. Alright, so I have normal minus w cosine theta is zero. So the normal is equal to the weight, which is mg, times the cosine of theta. And that's one fact that I know. Don't really need it for this part of the problem. I need the normal when I'm dealing with friction problems. Over here, weight is mg sine theta, and that's equal to max, but I see that I don't need to know the mass. Ax is g sine theta. This shouldn't be surprising by now that you don't need to know the mass to find the acceleration because gravity means that this is the falling body. It's just not falling at g. It's falling at something less based on the sine theta. Now, once you get an equation, before you start doing anything with it, you need to check to make sure it makes sense. So let's check to see if this thing makes sense. Let's take a couple of extreme cases. One case would be if we made our incline plane flat. So theta was zero degrees. If it was a horizontal flat table, I know the acceleration would be zero. The block wouldn't want to move. The block would just stay where it is. Well, let's see if my formula gives me that. Ax is equal to g 
times the sine of zero degrees. But the sine of zero is zero, so I get zero meters per second squared. Check, that makes sense. I want to look at the units of this formula. The units of this formula are g sine theta. Sine theta has no units. g has the units of acceleration. ax has the units of acceleration. Units make sense. Let's try one more possibility. What about if I tilted my inclined plane here so theta was 90 degrees? And here's my block. Well, in this case, this block would have no other force except weight pulling it straight down in this direction. The normal would be like that. So the force would be g, I mean would be the weight, and the acceleration should be g. It should be a falling body. Let's see if that works out. Ax is g sine of 90 degrees. The sine of 90 degrees is 1, and we just get g. So it makes sense. Our formula makes sense. Now, it's more than just makes sense. We can see something else that's important. G is a constant. The theta is given to us as a constant in the problem, so the sine theta is a constant. Constant times a constant is a constant, so the acceleration is a constant. So in step four, I can say that the acceleration is constant. And this has huge implications because now I know something. For constant acceleration problems, I can apply a particular formula called the kinematic equations. So we can use kinematic equations to work this problem. All right. In the follow-on video, I will finish this problem, but I want you to get the idea that the way we solve physics problems is by setting them up using fundamental concepts that we know are true and working to the consequence of those. We are not memorizing. If you try to memorize, you basically only have to memorize the universe, and no one can do this. No one. No matter how smart you are, they can't do this. Good problem solving is about understanding some basic principles, whether those are principles of accounting, there's principles of business, principles of law. For a lawyer, those are the so-called statutes. Those are precedents. And then figuring out how they can be put together to make a logical argument, i.e. solve a problem. Same thing for an engineer, same thing for physicists. Problem solving is a skill that will never go out of place. Technology may change, but problem solving never goes away. I'll see you at the next video.